What is intelligence? Have you ever wondered if you are intelligent? Who decides what intelligence is and what standards are used to measure intelligence? What criteria were developed and implemented to measure intelligence equally across economic and social classes? And how can we ensure that how we define intelligence in our culture is implemented the same way in others? Welcome to Four C's One Family. Today, educational and business institutions monopolize what defines intelligence. These institutions influence what data is observed and collected to label how intelligent someone is. They are the determining factors that formulate the rules implemented to judge if someone has the mental capacity or skills to be a successful and positive contributing member of society. Predetermined guidelines measure and predict an individual's overall IQ and learning ability. To a large degree, in most countries, government-sponsored organizations or institutions oversee and establish the standards for what defines intelligence. Grading systems and other benchmarks were created to measure each member of a population's overall mental capacity. On paper, the guidelines used to measure intelligence sounds straightforward. However, there are flaws in the way intelligence is measured. The question that needs to be raised is, what method can be used to define intelligence unequivocally? Academic ability, that is, the ability to recall and apply learned information, shouldn't be the sole criteria used to set or create specifications for determining what intelligence is. Natural intelligence isn't the exclusive ability to recall stored information rapidly. No one can acquire and apply, at least in meaningful ways, all the information available to humanity. The essence of intelligence should be based on the steps used to solve problems that haven't even been thought of yet. Acquiring or, in some cases, mimicking the ability to learn and remember things quickly and easily shouldn't be the only way to decide if a person is intelligent or not. Nowadays, this seems to be the determining factor in measuring a person's ability or competence to implement what they have learnt to become a successful, well-rounded individual. The truth is, in most situations, this may not be the case. Finding or creating a system that can be used as a predictor of a person's abilities isn't an easy task. Regardless of where you are from, one characteristic is the most prevalent indicator of a person's later success in life, and is also the one thing that schools never talk about or even try to develop in students. In the long run, this one thing foresees a student's ability to reach goals. It is an attractive looks, physical strength, standardized achievement tests, income, or popularity that can be used in all situations as a precursor to predict the ability to obtain and retain knowledge. Fortunately, the key is something anyone can learn to develop. It's called fortitude. Fortitude is the strength that enables a person to encounter difficulties and danger head-on while functioning bravely with courage. Bravery describes the ability to put aside fears and take action, while courage represents the willingness to take action when full of fear. Fortitude builds character and describes a person's moral fiber. If you say a person has fortitude, it means a person has a high level of toughness and determination while displaying endurance, perseverance, spunk, or gumption. Fortitude represents the passion and willpower to implement decisions, stay focused, and make long-term goals realities. 
It requires that a person possesses unwavering stamina and concentration to resolve problematic issues that hinder obtaining goals. On the other hand, people with fortitude often become isolated and, in some ways, outcasts. They are often called stubborn, hard-headed, pig-headed, or even selfish by people who cannot comprehend their reasons for pursuing a goal. To these naysayers, someone who displays fortitude has nothing but pipe dreams, and regardless of how other people see them, those who possess fortitude refuse to develop a glass heart and keep moving forward. Nevertheless, people with fortitude will not allow failures to define who they are because they have learned to accept and overcome daily trials and tribulations. They look at things the same way as marathon runners, who look at their long race over steep hills and deep valleys. They create milestones to reach and overcome one by one on their way to further milestones beyond the horizon. For those of you who already have fortitude or are thinking about developing fortitude, I would like to ask you a few questions. Do you feel intelligence is only developed in formal educational environments? Please explain why. How much fortitude do you think you have? And do you think you are intelligent? Please explain why. Explain why someone you admire has fortitude. And would you or wouldn't you consider this person intelligent? What proves that someone has fortitude and is intelligent? Once again, please explain why. How do you think intelligence should be measured? Do you know of an institution that monopolizes what defines intelligence? How do you think the way intelligence is described where you are is actually harming parts of society? If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have much more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.